Hello everyone, my name is Louise and today we'll be talking about a little extra epoxy and giving you some tips that might help you while trying to use this product. So let's get started. So today we'll be talking about a little extra ink epoxy. This is a US based brand based out of South Florida. It is a two part based epoxy with a one to one ratio. It is partially plant based and has zero VOCs. This epoxy has gone through rigorous lab testing and can withstand up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Once mixed, this epoxy has a work time of 25 to 30 minutes and has a full cure time of 72 hours. However, depending on temperature, which is ideally between 70 and 75 degrees, this epoxy can be handled after four to six hours of curing. As with all other epoxies, it's always a good idea to practice proper precautions when using this product. So when you go on their website, they currently offer three different sizes. They will be discontinuing one, but they will be keeping the other two. Their first size option is the eight ounce set. You'll get part A and part B, both four ounces each. They also have a 16 ounce set, which again, they will be discontinuing. And then they also have the 32 ounce set, which is 16 ounces of each. When they ship your epoxy, they make sure that the lids are on very, very, very tight. Which means, once you receive it in the mail, you probably won't be able to unscrew the lid. So, to help you with that, it's always a good idea to either have pliers, or in my case, vice grips. What you're going to want to do is clamp down on the lid and unscrew. Epoxy is extremely temperature sensitive. So during shipping process, it may endure temperatures lower than 70 degrees. So once you open your bottles, their chemist does recommend that you leave the lids off for at least 5 minutes to allow it to air out. So when going in to mix your first batch of epoxy, you're going to want to do a 1 to 1 ratio of each part A and B. So to do that, you're either going to want to take a medicine cup just like this with measurements on it, or what I personally like to do is use these medicine syringes which can be found at the pharmacy or you can find these on Amazon. And these are really great with getting a really accurate measurement of the epoxy. So once you get both parts of your epoxy mixed into your measuring cup, whether it's this measuring cup or you use a bathroom cup or whatever vessel you decide to mix your epoxy into, you want to mix slowly and make sure to ensure that it's mixed correctly and you're not having any issues when it comes to using your epoxy. And now I know that sometimes I can get lazy or I'll be in a hurry and I want to mix it fast and I will and I'm guilty of that. But the wonderful thing about a little extra is the bubbles will pop themselves, unlike a lot of epoxies that I've used in the past. It takes little to no heat. I recommend using a torch with this epoxy. It pops the bubbles instantly, and most of the time, I don't even feel like I need to use a torch at all. When you're in colder temperatures, it's a good idea to make sure the room that you're working in is at least in between 70 and 75 degrees. That's about epoxy's happy place. If it does drop colder than that, you either want to turn on a space heater in your workspace or what I like to do is sometimes I'll take the thicker part which is part A and I will stick it in a cup of warm water let it sit there for about five minutes while I'm prepping my cups or whatever I'm working on my molds and let it kind of loosen up and that will help it a lot as well at the same time if you want to go ahead and mix part A and part B together and take your cup that you mixed it in and stick that in a cup of warm water that will work the same way as well. Once you mix these two together, even though part A is quite thick, it will loosen up quite a bit and it'll be really nice and viscous and easy to use on whatever project you're working on. I love using this epoxy on tumblers. It gives it the most amazing shine I've ever seen from any epoxy out there. It has little to no smell. I usually have to put my nose all the way up against the cup to even smell anything. Even then the smell is very faint. This is also a great use for mold making. So with most other epoxies, you usually get a bubble cloudy cast on your molds. And with this, it's completely clear. To show you the difference, here is the difference between a little extra epoxy and another brand's epoxy. You can see right there the cloudiness I'm talking about and this one is completely crystal clear. So if you have any issues while working with your epoxy, first of all, I would try to make sure that the temperature in your workspace is at least between 70 and 75 degrees. That is the perfect window for epoxy. Too cold will make it cure slower. It'll make it a little harder to work with. But again, if you follow my tips and tricks on how to avoid that, 
you should be just fine. If you do experience some bubbles on your tumbler or whatever product you're working on, if you're working on silicone molds, a, bottle, a spray bottle full of alcohol with just one or two spritz over your mold will do the job to pop any bubbles that might be popping up on your molds, but for the most part, they'll pop themselves. Again, as I mentioned earlier, my preferred method for tumblers is a torch. You just want to take it and constantly move it over your tumbler so it doesn't scorch the epoxy because it will if you hold it in one spot and you don't want it to ruin your project. You just want to take your, your torch and very lightly just run it over your tumbler at least one time around on your turner and it will help pop any bubbles. Just make sure you keep it moving. And then one last final tip is if you're in a colder climate, we're here down in Florida so it's not as much of an issue for us with the heat, but if you do find and you wanna be extra cautious and make sure that your epoxy cures correctly, I would suggest following through with a heat gun on your tumblers. That way you make sure it moves the way you want to and you get that smooth glass-like finish. I'm super impressed with the little extra epoxy. They have amazing customer service. Their product stands up to their claims. It's partially plant-based, which is great for the environment. And the finish is just impeccable. The glass-like finish on tumblers is absolutely insane and gorgeous. It makes your cups look 10 times better. I'm very impressed with a little extra ink. I took a chance on them and I'm so glad I did. It's the best epoxy I've ever used and I've tried so many epoxies in my tumbler career. I love the glass-like finish it leaves on my tumblers and my molds. I love the low odor and it doesn't give me a headache like other epoxies do. Although it's still always a good idea to wear a respirator when using this product. You, wearing gloves, wearing eye protection because sometimes epoxy can find its way in places you don't need it to go. So you always want to make sure you take those proper precautions. But again, the shine, the lack of smell, being partially plant-based, including the bottles that they use to package it in, their amazing customer service, you can't go wrong. So I hope this video was helpful and gives you a little more insight and a little extra epoxy. If you have any questions or concerns, reach out to them through their Facebook page, A Little Extra Ink. They've also started a Facebook group, A Little Extra Ink Tumblr and Art Epoxy group. So make sure you go over there and join. It's a great group to join for any questions you may have on the epoxy, um, any tips and tricks you might be looking for, things like that. And again, if you have any questions, you can reach them through their Facebook page, A Little Extra Ink, or you can email them through their website through tumblerepoxy.com.